So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to load a sprite sheet, get your little sprite moving in all directions, have it cycling through an animation counter for the corresponding directions. I haven't planned this video out, video out in advance. Uh, I've done the different directions in a different tutorial series, but uh, this tutorial series is going to take it a lot farther than the previous ones. But uh, I've never done the actual cycling through the animation in a series yet, so hopefully it won't be uh, too bumpy. It should be pretty straightforward. So let's just get started, and we're going to do it from scratch. We're just going to go to Dogpile or Google, and let's just type in uh, Sprite Sheet. It's like I'm lagging a little bit. So let's try and find one where our character is moving in all directions, up, down, left, and right. Let's try a sprite sheet walk. This one's down, left. Yeah, let's do this one. So we're just gonna save the image and we'll call it Sprite Walk to our desktop. What we're going to do is we're going to drag that into our resources. And so we have spritewalk.png right here. We're then going to just um, copy this um, loading a sprite, create a new one. We're going to change the texture to um, texture player. I don't think I'm gonna explain it, everything in such crazy detail the basic steps but I'm still going to be very clear um, so we're going to type sprite walk dot png and then we're going to name it sprite player change the texture to texture player um, sprite player we can set the position to here's an example of uh, the window window dot uh, get size dot x divided by two window dot get size dot y divided by two so that should load it in the sprite into the center of the screen so what we're going to do is we're going to draw this uh, we can get rid of our text by commenting it out and let's go draw player and we're going to go window dot draw sprite player so now it should load the entire sprite sheet if we run this in the center. So it's loading the centers right here. And we can just cancel out our lion. And so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna load in a little section. So we're gonna go to our learn tutorials and then um, sprites and textures. And we go right here and we're going to set the texture rect. So when we create this um, sprite, we can go sprite.set texture rect, um, but we have to rename it to sprite player. And this is where it starts on the image at the top. Um, the top uh, left. So we're gonna make it load from zero, zero. And just just to be very explicit, uh, zero, zero is right here. It's gonna start loading from right here. Uh, and then the next two parameters are how big it's going to load in on the width and height. So 32 by 32 is going to be loading in, starting from here, 32 over by 32. And I'm not sure what the dimensions of this little section is, so we'll just try and figure it out by trial and error. So we'll run our project. 
Oh, it, it was 32 by 32. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so now we've just loaded this section in. So that's how you do that. You just use this set texture rect. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to get our um, multi directions working. So we're just going to paste um, this keyboard is pressed four times. Uh, and we're going to use up. These are the arrow keys down, left, and right. I just redid that. But we're going to go sprite player dot move. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to make him move up. So up is actually negative one for Y because of the coordinate system. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to paste it into all the other ones. So for down, it wants to be positive in the Y. And for left, it needs to be negative um, and for right it needs to be positive in the X so now we should have our little guy loaded and we can use our arrows to move him around and it works so you should be pretty excited if you didn't really know what you're doing up to this point but it's gonna get crazy not not crazy hard though and so let's say that um, because we're moving at a speed of 1 what if we wanted it to be very easy to change? Let's just um, create a variable and we'll call it float um, player movement speed. And we're gonna set that equal to two. And then instead of having a one here, we're just gonna write player movement speed. So now if you wanted to change the speed, you would just go up to that variable and change it from a two to, to something else. So now the guy's faster. So that makes it a lot easier on us. Okay, so what do we wanna do? Well, we want to have it so when he's moving up, then it shows the up section of our sprite sheet. So we're just gonna copy this set texture rect. And so when it's up, we want to be loading in um, the correct position on the sprite sheet for where he's facing up. So up is actually one, two, three, three down. So 32 times three, I believe should be correct because it was 32 in height. So if we load in from Y is 32, times three and we're moving up then it actually shows the right one so what if we wanted him to be moving down what would be the one there it looks like down is zero so um, zero so we'll just paste this in and zero is correct there. What if he's moving left? Left is one times 30, one times 32 for Y. And for right, it should be two because it, we're loading it in that one. So now it should show the correct um, facing direction for each way that we're walking. And that's exactly what we wanted. But it's not really animating when we're walking in a certain direction. It's just showing the direction. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we create a counter. So let's create a counter under variables. We'll call it int counter walking equals zero. And so this might take me a couple tries to get this right, but um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be cycling through the starting X position um, on our sprite sheet. So this sprite sheet is very small, so it only has from zero to one to two. So we're gonna be cycling through using multiplication, using, and our counter, uh, zero, to 
one times, so zero times 32 is right here. 32 times one is right here. 32 times two is right here. So it's gonna be loading this one in the final one. So we're going to write um, counter walking times 32. And we're gonna use that for each X starting position right here. And then we're just gonna create a counter that's updated every frame. So we're going to go um, counter walking plus plus. And if counter walking equals two, then what we're gonna do is we're going to set counter walking equal to zero. So it's going to cycle through. So we set counter walking equal to zero right here. And so we start our game and we're gonna load in counter walking equals zero. So zero times 32 is going to load in right here because zero times 32 is zero for X. And then it's going to um, increase the counter walking by one. And this isn't true. So it's gonna go to the next one and it's gonna go one times 32 and it's gonna load in one times 32, which starts for the X right here. And it's gonna cycle through again. And it's gonna go two times 32, which is right here. It's gonna load this one in. I'm trying to be explicit. So sorry if I'm kind of boring you right here. You might need to rewind the video to make sure you have everything written down properly and understand it though. Uh, so we have, if counter walking equals two, then we're gonna reset the walking counter equal to zero. So now the walking animation should work. Yeah, so we have our little guy walking it. I don't know if you can see that. He's got his little walking animation. So what, what would you do on a different sprite sheet? Like we could have any sprite sheet if we go back to dogpile image search, like, um, Where's it? Where's the interesting one? Well, for instance, we could be using this one, right? But we wouldn't be using up and down. Uh, so we could just load in, um, we would have to find what the width and height is of each of these squares, just like we did before. And then we would have it cycle through the animation going zero times this width, and then uh, one times this width, two times this width, and it would be cycling through the counter and showing the animation while it's going in that direction. So you can do this with any sprite sheet you want. It really doesn't matter. We could have done it with this one. Um, let's say you have a sprite sheet that has a section that has a attacking animation. So you have your sword in one and it's sort of just like maybe it's down and then in the next uh, sprite frame, it has it up in the air. And the next one it has it attacking. And then it has it maybe like going back almost to be sheathed again. So we could do the same thing that we just did in the walking and we could cycle through an attacking animation in the exact same way with a counter cycling through. It's the exact same thing. It's just a different action. So if we, if we wanted to do that, we could say, oh, let's say the keyboard is, we press space to attack, so we type space. We then have a different, um, a different uh, counter for that. And we would do our little attack animation for that specific section of the sprite sheet. So let's say that maybe this image was bigger and there's a little three three sprite attack animation right here. It would go 32 times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times 32 is where the Y would load in. Then we would have seven times 32 right here for where Y starts. And we would have our separate counter attack times 32, which would last from zero to two and reset. And it would also be loading in the width and height of 32 by 32 and it would be our little attacking animation and so that's how that works so i hope this video was very useful to you 
Uh, it's very essential to using SFML and getting your sprites to do what you want. Um, so give it a thumbs up if you thought this video was helpful and I'll see you next time.